This is the Dean, the Dean Show. This is the Dean Show. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, assalamu alaikum, peace be with you. Welcome to the Dean Show. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Eddie, your host, and we got back in the studio with us today, Dr. Lawrence Brown. Let me tell you a little bit about Dr. Lawrence Brown. He is a doctor by profession, former U.S. Air Force major. Some would say he's a Christian scholar. He's got some knowledge of the Bible, some knowledge of Christianity. He went from being an atheist, tried very hard to be a Christian, didn't fit, it didn't work, and he became a Muslim. He consciously chose to submit, not to a man, to one, but the creator of man and woman, the one God. And he's still following the teachings of Jesus. How is that? We're going to be talking about this on this week's show, so don't go nowhere. Be right back. This is the Dean, the Dean Show. This is the Dean Show. This is the Dean, this is the Dean Show. This is the Dean Show. This is the Dean Show. This is the Dean, this is the Dean Show. 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 Assalamu peace be with you, Dr. Brown. How are you? Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Now, what did you say? You said you? something in Arabic. What's going on here? Can you translate it for English for our not yet Muslim audience? We will come back to this later in the show, I expect, inshallah. Okay, I'm going to hold you to that. Okay. You have a peace. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace be upon you. Wa rahmatullahi. Uh, and the, the rahmah, the mercy of Allah, Allah, wa barakatuh, and the blessings of Allah. Now you have a DD, Doctor in Divinity. You have a PhD in Religious Studies. And people can go to thedeanshow.com to hear your conversion story, how you accepted Islam. Now, when I opened the show, I said, because you accepted Islam, that complete total submission and surrender, acquiring peace by submitting yourself to the owner of peace, the one God, the same way of life that was lived by all the messengers of God, including Jesus. And I said, you still follow many of the teachings that Jesus followed. Yeah, Am well, I the... lying? Was I telling a lie? But no. you're a Muslim. How does this work? No, well, this is the point. And I frequently get into this discussion with Christians where I just point out to them, I say, okay, you say you are a Christian. Fine. Okay, well, look, first of all, you know, as Muslims, everybody is allowed to choose their own religion. Okay? If you want to be Christian, that's fine. If I want to be Muslim, that's my choice. You know, uh, everybody, everybody has the right to choose their own religion, and we should live in the spirit of mutual tolerance of that choice. Okay? Um, however, in the spirit of interfaith uh, dialogue, uh, when, when we do get into this discussion, what I'd like to point out is when somebody calls themselves Christian, this means, this means that they consider themselves to be a follower of Jesus Christ. Right? So, so we're going to set that straight. So a Christian is supposed to be someone who is following the teachings of Jesus Christ. Well, what does Christ Shin mean. What Why don't you Christian define mean? that? Take so, us, give us a, a little bit of a history lesson just in this word Christian, where it stems from the Hebrew coming along to the English. Can you just briefly, what does this word actually mean? The, well, if you look in the Bible, you, you follow the, excuse me, if you look in the Bible, you find the first reference to Christian. Uh, it, was, it was said 42 years after the time of, uh, of Jesus' mission at Antioch. And it was actually, it was considered to be a derogatory term. It was not a polite term. It was, it was like, oh, you want, to be, you want me to be a, a Christian? You know, sort of in this spirit. So it was considered a derogatory term. Uh, however, with rather typical Christian humility, and I mean that in a good way, not a bad way, but in typical Christian humility, they adopted the term and, and kept it uh, to, to basically identify their group. Now we have to remember that the original followers of Jesus Christ were Jews. They were Jews, they considered themselves Jews for many generations, and they were proud to be considered Jews. It was only later that the, the division between 
the Jews who followed the teachings of Jesus and the, and the Jews who did not follow the teachings of Jesus, this divide became wide enough that historically they started to become identified by a different term. Originally they started to, started to be called Christian Jews by historians until uh, basically they split to being called Christians, period. Did Jesus call himself a Christian? No, never. Did he ever hear this word Christian? No. Christianity? No, and you have to remember, uh, you know, the, it, if you look in the Bible, the, the word Christian is, it's only found three times. And it, none of these occurrences occurred during the lifetime of Jesus Christ. The, it, it, it did not exist. Christian is found three times. Christianity is found nowhere in the Bible. You, okay. you, you don't find it anywhere. And, and it stems, of course, from Christ, but you have to remember, uh, Jesus Christ was not walking around saying Christ. Okay. Okay, what, what you know, the, the word that was, uh, you know, translated to be Christ was basically, you know, Messiah. Uh -huh. what, you know, how, how the... Uh, you know, in, in Hebrew, it was the word for Messiah, and it was translated to, to, uh, to Christos in, in uh, Greek, and then from the Koine Greek, in, it was anglicized to Christ. Um, but the, the key here is we have to remember that that was not an exclusive term. Uh -huh. if, if, you look, if you look in the Old Testament, you find this, the, this word for Messiah, this word for Christ, applied to many different individuals. Mm -hmm. uh, it, was, it, was, it was applied 30 times to the Davidic kings. It was applied six times to the, um, to the high priest. And it was applied twice to the patriarchs of the Old Testament. And so you had, you had uh, roughly 38 different individuals or 38 different instances in which other individuals were identified with the same term translated to Christ as Jesus Christ. So, as Muslims, we do not argue with the fact that Jesus Christ was the Christ. Do we believe he was the Messiah? But, we, you know, we believe that he was a man, he was a prophet, he, he, was, a he, he was, a, you know, he was a prophet sent by God, he brought a revelation to the people to try to bring them back from, uh, from the deviation that had crept into their religion. But, but, but the point is, I'm just, I'm just saying to set the record straight, Jesus was a common name, okay? Up until that time, Jesus was a common name. And there were many other individuals who were also identified by the same term, which is translated to Christ. It oh. was, he did not have an exclusive on that term. Yeah. And also, okay. we believe he was the Messiah? Well. I mean, he's identified as one of the messiahs. One of the messiahs. Yeah. I mean, there are, you know, again, as Muslims, we believe in a continuity in the chain of revelation. There, there were many prophets bringing the word of God to many different What does this word messi populations. messiah mean? Uh, messiah, actually, it means uh, anoint or anointed. Anoint, anointed. Or anointed. Yeah. Uh, so uh, anybody who was anointed... I mean, you, you find the root of this word applied to, uh, to non-living things, things that were, things that were anointed, yeah. ha were identified by the same, by the same root word. Let, let me bring us back now, now, okay. So, so excuse me, any individual, yeah. any individual who was anointed was, was identified as a messiah. Let's go back to the original question now. Okay, so we know where this word stems from. Jesus never used it. He never knew of this word, but today people call themselves Christians, so if you would ask a Christian, they say, we're following Christ. But we say, we're also following Christ. Now, when I opened the show, I said, you're following Christ. You were trying hard to be a Christian, right? but you're not a Christian, but you're following Christ. What does this mean? Well, I think this is the point. The point is that uh, Christians believe by you know, the, by the name of their religion that themselves to be the followers of Christ. Muslims also believe themselves to be the followers of Christ. And, and so you have these two different religions, both of them saying, we follow the teachings of Jesus Christ. The question is, who really is doing it? Who really is doing it? Let's take a break and we'll be right back with more here on The Dean Show. 
No speech is better than to do that. To call people to Allah and to do the work. No speech is better. No, nothing is better than that. Is it true that if one person on the Allah giving you the ability to guide someone with Allah's permission, the Creator's permission, that is better than everything in this world? Better than the whole world and everything that's in it. In, in another narration, it's better than the best of wealth. But if we really felt that, Eddie, would we not be give, out giving down? And this is something that we encourage all the MSAs, all the Dawah organizations, the masjids to get this. We want to print more. We give these to the non-Muslims for free, for free, for free. We want our brothers in humanity to become our brothers in faith. I am not afraid to stand alone. I am not afraid to stand alone. If a lie is by my side, I am not afraid to stand alone. I am not afraid to stand alone. If a lie is by my side, I am not afraid to stand alone. I am not afraid to stand alone. If a lie is by my side, I am not afraid to stand alone. Back here on The Dean Show with Dr. Lawrence Brown. Thank you for being on the show. My pleasure. It's always a pleasure to As have you. As always. Now, we are talking about Jesus. Peace be upon him who is beloved to our hearts. He's one of the mightiest messengers of God. We believe no Muslim is a Muslim unless he believes or she believes in Jesus. So we're not the Antichrist? <laughs> You know, Some people would say, like, these Muslims right. are the Antichrist. Right, of course. And they're trying to project their dislike for the religion. And this is just an excuse that they come, uh, come up with. But uh, Islam, the Islamic religion, honors Jesus Christ, honors his mother, Maryam, and, uh, and uh, we, we revere him for what he was, a man, a prophet, uh, somebody who... God chose to convey revelation to the people. Now, someone make a strong argument and say, hold on, hold on, that we as Muslims, would you agree, follow the teachings of Jesus more than the Christians do? Well, okay, some make that statement. What, what I like to just throw out is for people just to look at the evidence and come to their own conclusion. So uh, we can say a talk is cheap, but we can back it up with evidence? Look, let's break it down. Go ahead, please, break okay. it down. Um, if you're talking with a Christian, it's just kind of natural to say, okay, you're a Christian, you say you're a follower of Christ, I'm a Muslim, I say I'm a follower of Christ, let's, let's just compare some basic issues and see who's really doing it, okay? Um, ask anybody, close their eyes, and with their eyes closed, just conjure up an image of what they conceive Jesus Christ to have looked like. Hold on, okay. I'm doing that right now, Dr. Brown. I'm doing that right now. Some people, you know, they have an African-American, you know, uh, with black eyes and, 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 and curly hair. But someone else is closing his eye. They got blonde hair in this church over here, blonde hair, blue eye. Yeah. And in another church, they got uh, the Jesus, you know, Hispanic looking. Which one is it? Well, look. It depends what church you're at. <laughs> okay, and, and this is because a lot of people have turned the reality of Jesus into a fantasy of Jesus. But they all, they, I, but then one they, thing I want to... Uh, well, wait, yeah. wait, wait. They, you know, I mean, they, have, they have tried to sort of model him to be closer to their heart's desire. Ah. But my, po my point is that no matter, no matter how a person sees them... They I always, still see a beard on them, though. That's right, that's right. I see a beard like yours, kind of. And like yours. Okay, and, and like we see among some Christians, but certainly not the majority, very few Christians wear a beard, and very few wear a beard because they are following the example of the prophet. They might say they didn't have razors back then. Okay, but let's move on, because this yeah. is kind of a superficial... Okay, okay, <laughs> okay. Okay, because first of all, yeah, they did, I mean, there were plenty of people who shaved. Yeah. All right. There were plenty of but, shaved, but, but he point, had a beard. But the point, yeah, I mean, the point, okay. the point was that... Uh, if, we, if, we, if we think about it, just from the very sort of superficial aspect of what Jesus Christ Let's move like. along from there. Beard? Because right. let's not get stuck on this yeah. point. I mean, we know that Jesus Christ, I mean, he wore a beard. Okay. His, his mother, Miriam, if you conjure up an, an image of her, you always see her wearing a headscarf. Okay? Mm -hmm. Walk into any church, look at the stained glass windows, look at the paintings, look at the sculptures. She's always covered. That's like the Muslim wearing veil. Wearing a headscarf which is more like what you encounter with the Muslim uh, headscarf gotcha, than gotcha. what you encounter commonly with, you know, Christians on the street. I see, okay. Okay, in the same way, 
picture Jesus Christ standing during the Sermon of the Mount or any other time. What do you see him wearing? He's wearing loose, not form-fitting clothing, a long robe to the wrist, to the ankles, maybe tied at the waist by a rope, maybe not, but it doesn't show his form. It, it's a dress of modesty, okay? And again, where, where do you see people dressing with modesty more among the Muslims or among the Christians, many of whom wear very revealing clothing mm -hmm. by, you know, by yesteryear's standard. This is like the Muslim thobe? <clears throat> Would you yeah. compare it to it? Like the Muslim thobe or the Muslim, even the Muslim abaya for men, what they call the abaya for men. Um, and, uh, but all, all I'm saying is like, for example, if you took the people of this time and you transported them back a hundred years in this country, in America, and you walked them down Main Street, USA, the Christians, many of the Christians, the way they're dressing now, they would be ostracized by their own people. Okay, go, go, and, look at, go and look at movies that, you know, that, that were uh, you know, filmed about the people of this time where they portray them in their realistic clothing. Mm. And you'll see the women, the women were dressed, again, you know, long flowing dresses yeah. you know, to their wrists, to their ankles, with head, head bonnets and so on and so forth. So th this is uh, resembling more the Muslim now? Again, again we're so talking we about the fact that the, the Muslim embodies the appearance, okay. the, you know, the appearance of the woman, the headscarf, the appearance of the dress. This, this is all now kind of you know, superficial aspects of who Jesus was. Give us more, give us more, please. You know, now let's go, to, let's go to something else. Let's just go to how he carried himself, what he was about. Yeah. He was a man of modesty. He was a man of humility. He was a man of quality. Uh, we, when we think of Jesus Christ, we think of somebody who spoke about salvation, who reminded us of religious values. We don't think about somebody who was constantly dealing with worldly you know, aspects of, of our existence. Uh, again, it's just been my experience. When you're in a, a circle with Muslims, you find that the Muslims are much more commonly talking about religious issues and uh, sort of bringing any conversation back to uh, back to this, then, then you find in a common, you know, just in this sort of common uh, workplace chatter or whatever uh, among Christians. More, yeah, okay. Now, now, this is not a big point, you know, and the big points are more to follow. But so you're saying the Muslims now are, are more uh, talking about the spiritual development of the human being, talking about the prophets, about the God, and where over here you got more material things that. Uh, you Look, know, uh, the he people are focusing on nightclubs, dancing, hooking up with women, things that Jesus never talked about? Yeah, look, it's just, you know, most Christians know that in Christianity, most people in Christianity have made the religion a pretty much a, a Sunday's only religion. Yeah. Okay. And but yet, Jesus, this is a 24-7 thing for him. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, you find Muslims praying five times a day, making ablution before, before prayer. And how do you forget your religion if you're making ablution before your prayer, Praying five times a day, getting you know, getting up uh, you know early morning for the first prayer, staying up you know in the night for the last prayer, and so on. I mean, how do you forget your religion? Your your religion cannot become a Sunday's only sort yeah. of thing when you're doing it every day. Did he do this? Make evolution? Did he fall on his face like we fall on our face and pray? Okay, now that's an, another step. Yeah. Okay, let's. We've talked about appearance. Mm -hmm. All right, we've talked about manners. One of the elements of manners. Let's look at something in that that Jesus Christ actually told us to do. All right. He, he, he told us to offer the greeting of peace. He, he instructed his disciples that when they meet one another, offer the greeting of peace. That was like in, we did, like we did in the beginning, isn't that's it? it? That's what I'm coming to. That yeah. was in, that's Luke 10, 5. Okay? Uh -huh. In Luke 10, 5, he instructed them, but then he, he actually acted out the example four times in Luke 24, 36, in John 20, 19, 20, 21, and 20, 26. Okay, so one time he gave them a directive, and then four times he actually gave them the example of offering the greeting of peace. And that's why I was saying in the beginning, we'll come back to this, because you find that practice among the Orthodox Jews, mm -hmm. right? You find that practice in the Old Testament, you find it in Genesis, you find it in Numbers, you find it in Judges, you find it in First Samuel. Uh, and so there again, there's an example where Okay, we've talked about appearance, now we've talked about manners, where the Muslims always greet one another, assalamu mm alaikum, -hmm. you know, peace be upon you, wa alaikum salam, and unto you be peace. 
how many Christians do you find following this very simple directive? Mm -hmm. You might say, oh, this is a small thing. Come on, this is a little. If it's a little thing, why don't you do it? Mm -hmm. You know, it's not like Jesus Christ was telling you to move mountains. Yeah. He was just saying, offer peace. So why don't you do it? So these are some of the details, major, minor, but it seems like if you're trying to fit the description of who's following this, these mi major, major, minor, it seems like the Muslims. Yeah, but look, now this is minor, and I know what everybody out there is probably saying. What about saying. the major? Give us, we're I, almost out of time, so yeah. tell us something major, something that really can rock, you know, just rock somebody's mind. Practices of worship. Tell okay. me. Uh, first of all, religious practices. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ was circumcised. Paul said it wasn't necessary in Romans 4.11. Uh, Jesus Christ didn't eat pork, according to Old Testament law, Leviticus 11.7 and Deuteronomy 14.8. Oh, this is getting good 14, now, 8. Dr. Brown. Okay. Tell me some more. Uh, Jesus Christ didn't practice usury, either giving or, giving or taking, according to the, the law, Exodus 22.25. Okay. Uh, he did not have any contact with females, uh, members of the opposite sex. He didn't shake hands. He didn't touch. I'm not talking about having, you know, relations. I'm saying even the least little contact, okay? That's, that's, those are religious practices, you know, and in keeping with the Old Testament law. Move on to practices of worship. He performed ablution before praying, as do all Orthodox Jews. Exodus 40:31. Um, he, uh, he prayed in prostration. The only description of Jesus Christ praying in the Bible was in the Garden of Gethsemane, where he fell on his face in prayer. Okay, and if you look in the Old Testament, you find that Ezra, Joshua, Abraham, Moses, Aaron, they're all described as praying in prostration. So this was not just his example, this was the example of all the prophecies. He, pro he fasted for more than a month at a time, and he made pilgrimage. Now, okay, who makes ablution before, pr before prayer? The Muslims. The Muslims. Who, who prays in prostration? The Muslims. Five times a day? The Muslims. Who fasts a month out of every year? The Muslims. Who makes pi religious pilgrimage once in their lifetime required as a tenet of faith? The Muslims. Is that the end of it? No. The most important thing is creed. Let, let, let's hold off. We're going to take a break, and we're going to talk about the most important thing as we wrap it up here on The Dean Show. We'll be right back. So if you find yourself, your iman is going down, check yourself. There is none worthy to be worshipped except Allah alone. You got some CD or some music in the car, bobbing your head to fist sense or... No, it's common sense. Don't do things that can hurt people. Lady Gaga, Goo Goo, and all that other nonsense? Bullying is haram, backbiting, slandering, and such substance as smoking. Stay tuned, 18-inch biceps! We'll see what happens to Eddie on The Dean Show. And we holding it down on the Dean Show early. Make sure y'all tune in. Back here on the Dean Show with Dr. Lawrence Brown. And everything is adding up that it seems like the Muslims, those who have consciously submitted to the one God, because that's what a Muslim is, mm -hmm. seems like we're following Jesus, peace be upon him, more than many of the common day ordinary people today. Look, we've talked about appearance. Yeah. We've talked about manners. We've talked about religious practices. We've talked about practices of worship. But the most important thing, and the message that all prophets really came to bear, was the, the message of creed. In other words, you know, the truth of God. Yeah. Okay? And so we've talked about these four things. The, mo the most important thing is that Jesus Christ bore the message saying, No, O Israel, the Lord your God, the Lord is one. And now you said no, one. 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 Yeah. No, he's... Look, you didn't do this, this. You didn't do this, this. You didn't do any of this. No. M making look, it. Look it up in Mark 12, 29, yeah. Matthew 22, 37, and Luke 10, 27. Yes. Okay? Three, ta three times he bears the message that God is one. Uh, this relates back to the first commandment as you find in Exodus 23. So the, the bottom line is that Jesus Christ came saying what? Saying he was not sent but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Lost sheep. What does this mean? This means that they have gone astray from their message, okay? And what is the message that he is reminding them of? He, he is reminding them of their law. He is reminding them of Tawheed, the oneness of God. Pure monotheism? Pure monotheism. Now, where... Triumism? Where, where does Jesus Christ ever speak about the Trinity in the Bible? The Did Trinity, he ever utter this word? You, the Trinity is nowhere to be found in the Bible. And the biblical passages that people hold up to uh, support the Bible 
uh, cannot be used to support the, excuse me, the biblical passages that the Trinitarians hold up to support the Trinity um, are actually, cannot, cannot be used to support the Trinity. For example, the most common one is the first epistle of John 5, chapter 5, verses uh, 7 through 8. Okay, those were written into the margins of scripture by a scribe. Those were not in the original scripture, all right? Most, most valid Bibles of this day have, have removed that from, uh, from the translation because it's recognized as invalid. And in the same way, other passages which some claim to support the Trinity can be refuted very, very simply, not, yeah. nothing eloquent. But this is kind of, you know, we, we've jumped away from the subject. The point, the point is that whether you're talking about appearance, manners, religious practices, practices of worship, or the, the creed that Jesus Christ taught, he taught God is one. He taught that he was son of man. Jesus Christ called himself the son of man 88 times. Not the son of God. No. No, and this comes down to the, you know, a very, very critical uh, separation, and that is the separation between the teachings of Jesus Christ and the teachings of Paul. And the reason why this is critical is, is because Christianity is founded more upon the teachings of Paul than upon the teachings of well, Jesus Christ. We're, we're going to have to do that in part two. We have a couple more minutes left. Now, it sounds like to me, and we know that all the prophets of God, they taught Islam. Islam is that call to acquire peace by submitting your will to the owner of peace, the one God, and a Muslim is one who does Islam. Was Jesus a Muslim? All of the prophets were Muslims. I mean, you Muslim, said all of them. That includes Jesus. So you're saying Jesus. That's a bold statement, Dr. Brown. You have to understand what Muslim means. Muslim yeah. means a person of Islam. Islam means a person who submits their will to Allah. Okay, so yes, Islam might have had the name Islam from the time of Muhammad, peace be upon him, but all people of all time who submitted themselves to the will of God were Muslims. Was, you, what, you, was Abraham a human being? Yes. But when did this word human being come into existence? It wasn't during his lifetime. Nice, nice. Right? I see, I okay. see. I like that example. Was, was Moses, Noah, they Jesus? They were all human beings. Were they human beings? That word didn't exist during their lifetime. I like that. I okay, like the that. word came into existence later, but it applies backwards as well. Same thing with the word Islam. Islam is a general, I mean, it's a description of those who submitted their wills to Allah. And even though that word may have, you know, come into existence with the revelation of the Holy Quran and the prophethood of Muhammad, peace be upon him, it applies to those before him as well who fulfilled the, uh, the qualification. Well, one last point. We're out of time. One last point. You said earlier he was a Jew. Now we're saying he's a Muslim. How do you put the two together? Can, can you know, he be both at the same time? Yeah, uh, ab absolutely. He was an Orthodox Jew in the sense that he was not bringing any new law. Yeah. He, was, he was restoring the law of Moses. Okay, so I mean he was in the lineage of, of uh, David, right? And uh, so he fulfilled the qualifications of, of being considered a Jew. So that could be like a nation nationality. So you could be a Jew who's a Muslim, like so you could be a Bosnian Muslim, Serbian Muslim. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I mean, I mean, it doesn't matter whether you're from Muslim, Russia, China, Russian South, Muslim, South America, Jewish Muslim, whatever. Yeah. You, okay. You know, and it doesn't matter what your ethnicity is. Remember, I mean, remember being a Jew was basically an ethnicity. It, it was to, I see. back at that time gotcha. it was to be yes. a Hebrew, right? Yes. You know, and uh, and so you were ethnically a Hebrew, but you could still be. I mean, gosh, you could be a communist, a socialist, a Democrat, or whatever. But when it comes yeah. to religion, they were all all of the prophets were Muslim. We're going to take a break, and we're going to have to come back, continue this topic. It's a vast topic, and we're going to talk about. The comparison, which you said, the split between the teachings of Jesus, peace be upon him, and Paul in our next episode. Sounds good. Can you do this? God willing? Thank you. Inshallah. We'll see you in a few. Salam alaikum. And thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Dean Show. We've come to a close, but you got to see it. All the evidence adds up that Jesus, peace be upon him, who is beloved to our hearts, he was a Muslim. He submitted himself entirely, not to himself, but he submitted himself to the one God, the creator of the heavens and earth. And he was a messenger of God. And we follow the teachings of all the messengers, including the last and final messenger sent to mankind, the prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Tune in again where we're going to cover the teachings of Jesus and the teachings of Paul. And we're going to continue on with Dr. Lawrence Brown next time here on The Dean Show. We'll be 
and we'll see you then. Peace. I am not afraid to stand alone. I am not afraid to stand alone. If a lies by my side, I am not afraid to stand alone. I am not afraid to stand alone. If a lies by my side, I am not afraid to stand alone. I am not afraid to stand alone. If a lies by my side, I am not afraid to stand alone. So if you find yourself, your Iman is going down, check yourself. There is none worthy to be worshipped except Allah alone. You got some CD or some music in the car, bobbing your head to fist descents or... No, it's common sense. Don't do things that can hurt people. Lady Gaga, Hugu and all that other nonsense? Bullying is haram, backbiting, slandering, and such substance as smoking. Stay tuned, 18 inch biceps. We'll see what happens to Eddie on the Dean Show. This is the Dean Show. And we holding it down on the Dean Show early. Make sure y'all tune in. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, assalamu alaikum, peace be with you. I'm Eddie, your host, you're watching the Dean Show, and in the Dean Show studio, we have Dr. Lawrence Brown, who you can visit at thedeanshow.com, you can hear his soul story, read a little bit about him, and we're going to come back and continue talking about who's following Jesus more, are the Muslims or the Christians, and you need to know that we really want the best for all of humanity. Islam says love all mankind, and that's why we want to talk about these topics, and we want to put the evidence on the table, and we want you to have an open heart and open mind, and decide for yourself, decide for yourself what makes the most sense. And when we come back, we're going to make sense of it all with Dr. Lawrence ba Brown here on The Dean Show. God willing, sit tight. Is the maintainer, One of the, the beautiful preserver, things about our religion of Islam is the emphasis the on direct be ritual be and prayer to God directly. Is the there is no intermediary. The lights will go on after the party and the party will end. It's very simple and very clear. There are no superstitious rituals, no strange incantations. It's Time is running out. We might not make it till tomorrow. And this is something that we need to think about. This is an interesting thing that the, um, you know, we think when we read the Bible that we're, we're obviously reading the words that Matthew wrote or that Paul wrote. Um, but the reality is we don't have the originals of Matthew or of Paul's letters or of any other book of the New Testament or of the Old Testament. What we have are copies of these books that were made uh, later, in many cases, uh, many, most cases, many centuries later. So uh, we, the New Testament was originally written in Greek, and at present we have something like 5,500 manuscripts in Greek of the New Testament, which is a lot for an ancient book. It's far more than any other ancient book. The problem is most of these copies are hundreds and hundreds of years after the originals and all of them have differences in them. Uh, so that the scribes who were copying these manuscripts changed the text that they were copying, uh, sometimes by accident, I mean sometimes they just made mistakes, they were sleepy or incompetent or whatever, but sometimes it looks like scribes actually thought the text should say something other than it did and then they, so they would change the text. Assalamu alaikum, peace be with you. Alaikum salam. Doctor. Thank you very much for joining us, Dr. Brown. Mm. Now, time is short, and it's of the essence. People can go to thedeanshow.com, read a little bit about you. You have a doctor's in divinity. You have a Ph.D. in religious studies. Uh, you're an eye doctor by profession? Correct. Uh, yeah. uh, ophthalmologist? Yep. The and, eyes have it. Yeah. Now, you weren't a general, close to being a colonel, former U.S. major. No, hua, the only... Hua, did you say hua hua? <laughs> The only general I was ever was uh, I was a pain in the behind, but yeah. a general pain in the behind. But, uh, yeah. but uh, no, I was a major. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so great. So you are someone who's qualified to talk about this topic. In your previous shows that we've done, you talked about that you were an atheist, actually. Mm -hmm. You were trying very hard to be a Christian, and you ended up becoming a Muslim. The same way of life that Jesus, peace be upon him, followed. And we covered this in our last show. And we want to make sense of it all. That's how I opened up the topic. We want to make sense of it all. There's a lot of confusion out there. And you said there was a split in the last show. People, again, go to, to watch that show we did. You said there was a split between the true teachings of Jesus, peace be upon him, and now the teachings of Paul. 
Right. Well, it, it's it's more a, in the practical sense, it's a division between the teachings of Jesus Christ and the teachings of the church at this point. But uh, what it comes down to is the teachings of Jesus versus the teachings of Paul because the foundation of Christianity at this point is more upon the teachings of Paul than upon the teachings of Jesus. Now, a lot of Christians will not like hearing this. A lot of, a lot of people out there, a lot of Christians hearing that Christianity is founded more upon the teachings of Paul than upon the teachings of Jesus will object to that. Um, but the fact of the matter is that that is so well recognized now, even, even among Christian scholars, that uh, that the Christians themselves, you know, many Christians themselves are, are speaking of this, of this very fact. Is there a Bible that has not only the red letters, the black letters, the gray letters, and now you can see like what the words allegedly are that are closest to being possibly the words of Jesus, not at all said by Jesus, might have been said by Jesus? Right, right. Well, I think what you're talking about is the Jesus Seminar. The Jesus, Jesus, the Jesus Seminar has published a, uh, a book called The Five Gospels, and it's basically the four well-known Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Jesus Seminar? And, who, who's, what's this? Well, the Jesus Seminar is a body of, uh, of Christian fellows who came together to uh, analyze the Bible, and, and by analyzing the Bible, agree upon the authenticity of uh, Jesus' sayings within the Bible. Are these scholars that got together? They're priests, ministers, pastors. They're, they're religious scholars of a variety of denominations. How many of them got together? Uh, 200 over 200. time. 200? Yeah, over, you know, as, as memory serves, over time, they, they have a list of 200 fellows. And what did they conclude? Well, basically, in, in publishing the, uh, the, the five Gospels, they, they published, uh, they published the, uh, the, you know, the four well-known Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and then the Gospel of uh, Thomas. And the, uh, the point behind publishing it was to show which words attributed to Jesus in the Bible were most likely actually said by him and which words were not. So they, they graded them. For example, if they felt that the words, if they agreed that the words were most likely stated by Jesus Christ, then it was in red. Uh, if it was probable that, that he stated the words, then they are in pink. If uh, it is most likely that he did not say those words, then it is in gray. And if, if they felt that he definitely did not say those words, then it was in black. Now you would have to look at their you would have to look at their scheme for analyzing to get the exact classifications. I might be a little bit you know you know a shade of gray off on their classifications, but uh, but that's basically what it came down to. And and when you look through that book, what I can tell you is that you'll just find an awful lot of black and gray, and very you know very little of it from what you would expect is actually in in red. So. Um, this is, this is just to support the fact that, as most Christians know, there is tremendous controversy over what Jesus Christ actually said, actually did. And this is why you find so many books saying, who was the historical Jesus? Who was he really? What did he really say? What did he really teach? When people might say, hold on, hold on. We have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And these were his companions. And they're telling us what he said. They had first-hand accounts. Okay, well, first, first of all, uh, we have to remember that Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John were not necessarily written by his earthly disciples, okay? All four of these Gospels are anonymous. You're kidding me. Uh, no. <laughs> you know, as Muslims, we have to tell no, the truth. No. It's, you read, cannot, you cannot uh, bend the truth. You can't yeah. play with the truth. You've got to speak the truth. So what you're saying is a fact, or is this... Uh, according to Dr. Lawrence Brown opinion. No, no, no. This is, this is well known. Go to, go to any seminary school, uh, go to any true Christian scholar, read Graham Stanton, read Bart Ehrman. All of this is referenced in my books. Uh, you can find the exact quotations, but the, the bottom line is that all four of the Gospels are anonymous documents. They are not signed. They are uh, within the framework of the actual manuscript, they are not attributed to any uh, to any of the disciples. Uh, so, 
the, uh, the general feeling among the scholastic community uh, of this time is that none of the four Gospels can be attributed to one of Jesus Christ's earthly disciples. So how do we come back? We come back now as Muslims, and people already know by watching the show that basically a Muslim is one who submits to the will of God, and we say Jesus was a Muslim. We say that Jesus never taught, as you said in the last show, that he never taught, taught the Trinity, he, he never heard the word Trinity, that he never said that he was going to come to die for the sins of the world, but where are we getting this from? Do we see this in well, any of the red letters that we have? Well, uh, I mean, these are subjects that, uh, you know, basically, uh, they really deserve to be tackled. Yeah. Um, but each one is a subject unto itself. But doesn't this come because we put now Jesus, peace be upon him, and most people, you know, to support this, they'll go to Paul. The writings of Paul, won't they? Well, yeah, and, and this, is kind of, this is kind of the point. We, we started out talking about, on the last episode, we talked about the fact that the Muslims emulate the appearance of Jesus Christ closer than the Christians, wearing, wearing a beard, wearing modest clothing, as Jesus Christ did. The Muslim women wear a headscarf, as did, as did Miriam, the mother of Jesus. Okay? We, the, the practicing Muslims, the practicing Muslims, they conduct themselves with humility, with modesty, and they follow the tenet of religious practice that Jesus Christ taught of bearing the greeting of peace. Okay, uh, other religious practices, as we spoke about, circumcision, avoiding pork, avoiding usury, avoiding avoiding contact with the opposite sex. These these were all practices of Jesus Christ that that Muslims follow better than the example of the Christians. When you come into the acts of of actual worship, making ablution before prayer, praying in prostration, fasting. Uh, uh, you know, a month during the year in Ramadan, making pilgrimage for religious purposes. These were all practices of Jesus, which we find better exemplified among the Muslims than among the, the Christians. When, when it comes to creed, we find Jesus Christ teaching three places in the Bible that God is one, and we don't find him teaching the Trinity anywhere. Now, that's a big issue, and we can come back to that. Let, but, let's come back to that after the break. Is that okay? That's fine. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back with more We're here with Lawrence Brown on The Dean Show. I am not afraid to stand alone. I am not afraid to stand alone If a lie's by my side I am not afraid to stand alone I am not afraid to stand alone If a lie's by my side I am not afraid to stand alone I am not afraid to stand alone If a lie's by my side I am not afraid to stand alone Uh, some places it looks like it's a manipulation of the text, where, where the author wants to change, where, where the scribe wants to change what the author said. I mean, in many cases, it may be that the scribe thought this is what the author really meant, and so he changed it. But, uh, but sometimes the, the text gets changed to say just the opposite of what it originally said. And so uh, that's, uh, that, that can be a little bit troubling, yeah. Back here on the Dean Show with Dr. Lawrence Brown, and I want to go back to Jesus and Paul. How does this get intertwined now? How do we get from Jesus? Was Paul some apostle? Was he uh, another messenger? Who was Paul? Okay, well, this, this is kind of where I was leading to yeah. when we, just before the break. Um, we, we were looking, in the first episode of the, of the series, we were looking at how the teachings and the example of Jesus Christ, we find them in many, in many cases better exemplified among the Muslims than among the Christians. And... Uh, what we're, what we're talking about is how both Christians and Muslims say that they are, are followers of Jesus Christ, yeah. who is really doing it. Now, when you look at the teachings of Jesus Christ and you look at the teachings of Paul, one thing that really stands out is that they're almost virtual opposites. Opposite. It's now, you would expect them to be the same. It's like the, the antithesis of each other's teaching? No, you would expect them to be the same. Yeah. And the church makes them sound like they're the same, yeah. but in fact, they're basically opposites. Opposite. I'll, I'll give you an example. I mean, Jesus Christ taught Old Testament law. Yeah. All right. He, he, he came bearing the, the law of Moses, not trying to change it. I mean, he said, you know, he's, he said, he expressly stated that he did not come to destroy the law and the prophets. I did not come but to fulfill. And he, he you know, he came as what, Christians recognize him to have been Rabbi Jesus, right? So 
being Rabbi Jesus, I mean, what does it mean to be a, a rabbi? I, I mean, obviously you're following Old Testament law. So Jesus Christ bore the Old Testament law to, you know, to the people. Paul negated it. Right. You know, Paul basically came up with the concept of justification by faith. So on one hand, you had Jesus Christ holding the people accountable to the law. On the other hand, you had Paul saying, no more. Yeah. Can canceling it. Um, in the same way, Jesus Christ stated that he was an ethnic prophet. Mm -hmm. he, he, stated, Do not, uh, he stated that you know, he did not, did not come but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Yes. Negating everybody else. Yes. I did not come but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Paul said he's a, he's a universal prophet for everybody. Okay, now you can't have it both ways. Uh, Jesus Christ said one thing, Paul said another, and these two things cannot, be, they are mutually exclusive. You cannot, you cannot blend them. Uh, Jesus Christ taught prayer to God. I mean, the Lord's Prayer. Mm -hmm. You know, when you pray, pray in this way, right? And he taught prayer to God, our Father who art in heaven. Mm -hmm. he, he didn't say to the people, pray to me. Jesus Christ taught prayer to God. Paul taught prayer to Jesus. Uh -huh. Jesus Christ taught divine unity. Uh -huh. he, he, he taught that, you know, the Lord our God, the God, the Lord our God. He taught the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Mm -hmm. Okay, but it's the Pauline theologians who, 300 years later, derived the concept of the Trinity. So all I'm saying, all I'm saying is that if you look at the Bible and see how the teachings of Paul contradict the teachings of Jesus, you basically are drawn to consider the fact that you need to decide which one you're going to follow. Is you're going to follow Jesus Christ, yeah. a recognized prophet, okay? or are you going to fi find Paul, a man who never even met Jesus Christ, yeah. was not one of his earthly disciples, claimed to have a conversion through a mystical experience, uh, and then went on to teach things very contrary to what Jesus Christ taught. So he wasn't an apostle. He wasn't a prophet. He wasn't someone chosen by Jesus or God well, to speak on their behalf. Well, what is an apostle? I mean, people call him an apostle and they elevate him. They elevate his status according to how they recognize him. But he was not, he was not a disciple. He was not, uh, you know, he was not an associate uh -huh. of Jesus Christ. No. Not at all. Okay. And did the brother of Jesus, James, who's mentioned the Bible, and many of the other companions, did they if you read the Bible, take him to task for a lot of the things that he was teaching? Oh, definitely. And the conflict between the, conflict between the teachings of Paul and the teachings of Jesus basically were the foundation of the conflict between Paul and the true disciples. For example, if you read, if you read James, right, well, what is it all about? It's all about, I shouldn't say all about, but you know, pretty much about this conflict. I, I mean, uh, the... Uh, you know, the uh, chapter, uh, Faith Without Works is Dead, is a chapter in, in which James is, is telling Paul that the, the people have assembled and they are going to pass judgment upon him. And so he's telling him, repent, you know, repent from the path that you are taking. The negating the Old Testament law and, and, and changing the concept of... Uh, the reality of Jesus Christ. James it, is telling Jesus, I mean, Paul? You have to remember, Paul put forward the concept of justification by faith. Yeah. That you are justified in all things by faith and not, yeah. not, by, uh, not by the law. Okay, uh -huh. you're, not, you're not held to the difficulties of the Old Testament law. Um, this, in their time, was punishable by death. Yes. This was blasphemy. Okay, and so James was, James was, as you said, taking him to task. Mm -hmm. uh, in, in the same yeah. way, you see conflict with Barnabas, you see con conflict with Peter, you know, the alleged rock upon which the church would be built, and so on. So uh, you, you find, uh, find one disciple. I mean, just find one disciple who agreed with Paul who wrapped his arm around him and said, yeah, buddy, you and me, we're in this together. Didn't, no, it didn't, didn't happen. happen. So if you look at, if you look at the, the Bible, and, and now you look at it with an open heart, open mind, and not what you know, your pastor or preacher is telling you, and you look at what God is saying, what Jesus is saying, 
what James, his brother, is saying, you'll find them in unity. But when, if you look at what Paul is saying, you see the exact opposite, the antithesis of their teachings. Basically, basically you find Jesus keeping uh, to a particular teaching. You find James and the disciples exemplifying that or following that. And you find Paul uh, on the opposite he's side. He's going somewhere over and here, way off right. the left. And, and, and this he's, is, out, he's out of the ballpark. No, this is, this is why, uh, you know, this is, this is why many scholars have basically uh, categorized uh, Christianity into uh, the category of those who are following the teachings of Jesus, those who are basically Pauline Christians yeah. in, in the modern sense of Pauline yeah. Christians, which meaning, means following the teachings of Paul. It, it seems like there has to be another messenger to come. It seems like there's some confusion and there has to be someone else coming to make things right. Was there any talk of another prophet in the Old Testament, the New Testament, that talks about another prophet who's going to set things straight? This, uh, this actually, okay, this might sound, sound like a complex issue, but it actually is very straightforward. The Old Testament speaks of three prophets to follow. Go and ask any Jewish rabbi anywhere in the world how many prophets they are expecting to follow, and they will say three. Now, there's evidence for this in the New Testament. Go to your New Testament, open it up. You'll find that when John the Baptist was preaching, the Jews sent their scholars to ask him who he was. And they, they say, they accost him, basically, and they ask him. They say, are you Elijah? He says, no. Are you the Christ? He says, no. Are you that prophet? He says, no. How many fingers is that? Elijah, Christ, that prophet. Three fingers. Three. Okay? And when he denies it, then they actually they restate it. They say, if you are not Elijah, if you are not the Christ, if you are not that prophet, who are you? Okay, so it, it was clearly, clearly acknowledging the fact that they were expecting three prophets. Now, later on, we find Jesus Christ identifying John the Baptist as uh, Elijah. Another passage is in conflict with this, but we take it upon faith that out of these three prophets, John the Baptist was one, Jesus Christ was the second, and that leaves a third who's unaccounted for. Holy Ghost? <laughs> no. do, do they argue this, Holy Ghost? No, that has nothing to do with Nothing this. to do with it. So you can't use this as no. an argument. We're not talking about the Trinity here. We're talking okay. about the expected prophets to follow in the, in the continuity of the chain of revelation. Okay, prophet. This is someone that's coming. Yeah, the, this is a, a, a human entity. Okay. Okay, so... As I said, out of the three, John the Baptist was number one, Jesus Christ was the second one, and this leaves one additional prophet. This is why Christianity is identified as a messianic religion, because they are still waiting for the final prophet to complete the predictions of their own scripture. Can we tell them the final prophet, the last and final prophet that's sent to mankind when we come back from the break? Fine. We'll be right back with Dr. Brown. On the outside, everything looks good. You see the $100,000 cars, you see a lot of diamonds, you see a lot of females, and they think that this is, you know, this is a life. This is, this is, like, you know, paradise right here on Earth. It's not anyone's job to go into someone's heart and change their heart. Your job is to tell people what the truth is. And the reality of it is, while we're sitting here, while I'm sitting here constantly paying for the disease, the cure was free. As I studied more and more using my intelligence as an evangelical, but also praying about it, I became convinced that the New Testament Gospels were not written by eyewitnesses or by people who knew eyewitnesses. The first point to make is the rather obvious one that the Gospels don't claim to be written by eyewitnesses. They are all anonymous. The titles in your Gospels, the Gospel according to Matthew and so forth, were added by later editors. They were not put there by the original authors back here on the Dean show and everything God willing it uh, it's making sense if you have an open heart and open mind it's making sense you're talking about we left off the three to come and two are already there John the Baptist is this Yahya in Arabic Yahya yeah. and then Jesus Christ Isa Isa, Alayhi Alayhi Salam. Salam. that's the second yeah. Jews refused to accept him as a prophet we accept that he was one of the mightiest messengers of God no Muslim is a Muslim unless he believes in Jesus there's one last prophet peace be upon him and as his teachings, everything's got to be set straight. No more confusion. Mm -hmm. Can you talk to us? Who is this mighty messenger? 
Well, I know, of course, you want me to say Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa and that's, that's, of course, my answer. That's, of course, your answer. Yeah. The, the bottom line, though, is that each person has to examine the life of Muhammad, peace be upon him, examine the revelation that he brought, and based upon that examination, along with prayers to God to, to, to guide you, each person has to come to their own conclusion. I like that. I like, we're not going to push it on nobody. No. We're not I mean, pushy. I mean, it's, 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 it's easy to stand up in front of a camera and say, the final prophet was Muhammad. <laughs> believe it or, believe it or not. <laughs> look, look, it's not that way, okay? Yeah. I mean, it's not that way. We, we, are, we are inviting people to examine our beliefs. Uh -huh. We are inviting people to, to examine the evidence for themselves and to come to their own conclusions. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to leave it up to the people now. Yeah. There's, look, it's confusion out there. And, you know, things aren't making sense. Look, it's not complete confusion. I mentioned before the break that the Old Testament spoke of three prophets to follow, okay? Excluding, I mean, I mean taking away John the Baptist and Jesus Christ, that leaves one. You would expect in the New Testament to find reference to that one. You would expect to find Jesus Christ speaking of that one. And, in fact, he does. There is a famous passage, passage in which Jesus Christ mentions the fact that it is good that he will go because... If he does not go, he cannot send what is written in the foundational manuscript as Allos Parakletos, okay? Allos Parakletos. Allos means another. Parakletos means comforter, advocate, like a legal, legal advocate, a helper. Um, what is Parakletos? It doesn't matter. Why? Because elsewhere in the Bible, in the first epistle of John 2, 1, Jesus Christ is identified as Paracletos, as a paraclete, okay? Mm -hmm. So now we know what a paraclete is. Whatever a paraclete is, Jesus Christ was one. And now he is saying that after he goes, he will send Allos Paracletos, another paraclete. Mm -hmm. The key word here is another, all right? In the Koine Greek, there were two words for another. One is Allos, one is Heteros. Heteros meant another where there are two. Allos meant another where there are many. Allos Parakletos meant another of whatever Jesus Christ was, because he was a paraclete also. So another of many like what Jesus Christ was. Doesn't that sound more like the final prophet in the completion of the chain of revelation of many prophets? So actually, even in the New Testament, you find evidence of the final foretold prophet. As Muslims, we believe that to be Muhammad, peace be upon him, and all those who are upon a religious investigation, simply need to examine the evidences for themselves. Just one last point. Just please tell me if someone, just to move this out of their mind, someone says, again, that's the Holy Ghost. What do you got to say? There's, I'm sorry, but there's nobody who believes that that passage, nobody among scholars who believes that that passage refers to the Holy Ghost. Because this is not speaking of the Trinity. Okay. The passages that they claim to speak of the Trinity are well known. Wasn't the Holy Ghost there known. at that time? The, the Holy Ghost was pre-existent. Pre okay. I mean, it, it, was, it was referenced before, during, after the mission of Jesus Christ. So, so it, uh, it, but, but this is, uh, I mean, I'm, so, I'm just... Because I've heard people say this, that when you mention this, some people say, okay, this was th that the Holy Ghost that's going to come and be inside of you, and you've got to get full of it to understand it. Yeah, but these, I'm sorry, but these are, uh, you know, I'm sorry to put it on these terms, but these are the laity. These are the people who are just, they're creating an explanation for it, okay? These are not the scholars. I see. Get a scholar on your show who says that. I, I mean, I, I don't think you'll find a, 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 valid, a valid Christian scholar anywhere in the world mm -hmm. who will claim that these passages refer to the Holy Ghost because, because these passages, you know, explicitly refer to, uh, to predicted prophets. I'm in the middle of reading some of your books, God and Misguided. I love them. Tell us a little bit about your books that you got and where people can get a hold of you, Dr. Brown. Okay, well, uh, there are two websites. One is eighthscroll.com. Uh, just spell it as it sounds, eighth, E-I-G-H-T-H, scroll, S-E-R-O-L-L.com. The second website is leveltruth.com. Um, the series of books that I have written include an action-adventure novel called The Eighth Scroll, then 
scholastic religious books which contain everything that we've been talking about today and a great deal more. The first one is misguided. The second one is godded. And if you go to the website, leveltruth.com, you will find also articles, my conversion story. Um, and, uh, and I have other books that are uh, soon to be published. Thank you very much. May God Almighty Allah reward you for being with us. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Thank you. And thank you for tuning in to another episode of The Dean Show. Thank you. Thank you so much. And we never want to hurt anyone's feelings. We are sincerely trying to deliver to what we feel is the truth. It's very simple. It's rational, logical. All you have to have is an open heart and open mind. And we talked about the teachings of Jesus, peace be upon him, and that we're following those teachings. And we talked about Islam, which simply means to acquire peace by submitting yourself entirely to the owner of peace, the one God, and that is what all the messengers of God were on, and that's what we're on. So if you want to learn more, continue to tune into the Dean Show. You can even call the 1-800 number on the screen to get a free copy of the Quran, and we'll see you next time. God willing, inshallah, until then, peace be unto you. He created the universe To Him belong the heavens and the earth The ever-living, He is the first He's the owner of mercy He sent His messengers To warn His creatures Of the grave dangers Of worship other than Allah There is none greater Than the Creator Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar There is none greater Than the Creator